No matter how you cut it, pumpkins are just plain fun. If you think kids get excited about carving these orange orbs, you should try growing one. It is super easy and it doesn't take a lot of work either. Your first step, pick one. The choices are mind boggling. Squash come in so many fascinating shapes, colors, sizes, and some are so interesting it's hard to cut into them. So while the kids are getting their hands dirty, fishing out the innards from the inside of the pumpkin, ask them to save a seed or two. Sure, roast some seeds in the oven, 300 degrees for about 40 minutes till brown, but save a few for the garden too. This is all you need to grow a pumpkin, a pot, some compost from the garden store, and some seeds. You put in the compost, toss in some seeds now or in the spring, and they'll sprout when they're ready. Here's my pumpkin patch. The seeds were tossed in at this time last year and waited till this spring to sprout. I did nothing to help. And how exciting you're here to see the harvest of my very first pumpkins. Yeah, I've never grown them before. And here are a couple of other pumpkin tips for you. Nice. Try not to manhandle pumpkins by the top. Don't use the handle as a handle, okay? The top knot breaks off too easily and you want that. Now, instead of carving the top off, cut pumpkins from the bottom. That way you don't burn yourself putting the candle inside. And I've got a tip to make cut pumpkins last even longer. Have you ever noticed how fast carved pumpkins start to rot and mold? We spend all the time carving them and then before you know it, the face melts almost overnight. All right, so there's no Botox for pumpkins, but we need to slow the aging process. How do you do that? Keep your pumpkin outside. It's cooler and the air acts as a refrigerant for your pumpkin. Or get your pumpkin some face cream. Yeah, WD-40. It works as a preservative. Only adults should spray it inside pumpkins that will not be eaten. And yes, cover all the cut fleshy parts. You can get WD-40 at any home improvement store. The spray acts as a lubricant on exposed areas. It prevents mold spores from growing so quickly. Of course, let the spray dry before you put the pumpkin over the candle. You can carve it this year and grow it next year. Imagine how impressed everyone will be that you grew your own pumpkin. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. Yellow leaves, brown stems. There are good reasons why you need to clean up dead plants in the fall and winter. Let's take some of the guesswork out of which plants need to be cut and which you can leave for the winter and why it needs to be done. This peony is going to flop over and die. So cut off the leaves and stems of herbaceous peonies to prevent the possibility of botrytis. That's a plant virus that infects the new leaves in the spring, so this has to go. Same with the old tomato bushes and leftover veggies. The mummified fruit and vegetables are just a breeding ground for pathogens which winter over in the soil. After the first frost, this dahlia will look like slime. That's when you cut the stalk to within two inches of the ground. Leave it two weeks, then dig the dahlia, divide, or replant. Or you can leave it in the ground. Hostas are just begging you to take them out of their misery in the winter. Cut the leaves and stems to the ground. The slugs love to hide in there. Remove all the dead brown leaves from bearded iris. Remember bearded iris have leaves that are shaped like swords. There's a insect called the iris borer that will live over the winter in these dead leaves and then it'll be just waiting for the new leaves to come up in the spring. So we want to get rid of that now. Get rid of all the dead leaves. When lily stalks look like this, it's time to cut them to the ground. The leaves spent all summer soaking up the sun for next year's flower, but now it's spent. To keep butterfly bush from spreading seed, you can prune it hard. A foot or so from the ground, this will keep the bush from invading. There are some plants that I leave all winter long. I don't cut my roses back until early next March. I like the way the rose hips look. They're so brightly colored and they look great with a tinge of frost on them in the fall. The birds like to eat them as well. You need to pull off all the old leaves though, because that's a breeding ground for pathogens and be sure to pick up the leaves that are on the ground. You can also leave this sedum, Autumn Joy, alone. The seed heads look cool well into the winter and make a nice, really long-lasting arrangement. I've had this vase full of flowers for three weeks. If you still can't decide what to cut or what to leave, here's a good rule of thumb. If the leaves are yellow and the stalk is brown, cut it out. If the leaves are green, let it be. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon.